Today we are taking a trip down the rabbit hole to look into the dark and mysterious side of physics that often gets ignored. Sometimes those with scientific minds get sidetracked down a different path. What happens when one of the best scientists the world has ever known decides to mix their love of science with magic and the occult? Find out today on Matter. Jack Parsons was born Marvel Whiteside Parsons in October of 1914 and would spend much of his formative years in the areas around Los Angeles. From an early age, he suffered with a number of difficulties including dyslexia, which made his time at school very difficult and was on the receiving end of much bullying. But his love of science and specifically explosives and their applications began to grow from an early age and he quickly developed a knack for them. He eventually dropped out of college when he got his first job working at the Hercules Powder Company, where he began his work with various types of chemicals and explosives in order to discover new ways of combining them to increase their power. Parsons was the first person to develop a castable composite rocket propellant, and his contributions would greatly advance the fields of solid fuel as well as liquid fuel rockets. He would eventually go on to co-found one of the biggest names in rocketry that is still in operation today. If you were to just hear about these parts of his life, he would seem much like many of the other scientists at the time. But Jack was leading another life as well, one with a deep respect for the current day occult leaders like Aleister Crowley and filled with magic rituals and practices that would help fuel his dream of building a rocket strong enough to reach the moon at a time when much of the current scientific community thought that achievement still in the realm of science fiction. From his early career, Jack set himself apart from his peers with an unparalleled understanding of explosives and how he could mix them together to create new compounds with far more firepower. Throughout his life, his work has paved the way for the modern field of rocketry. And before Parsons' time, there was really no such thing as rockets as we think of them today. He was the first scientist to invent a new type of solid fuel that could be loaded into a specially designed engine that will burn and produce an enormous amount of thrust. This work quickly got him noticed by many of the big names in science, which led him into positions at some of the top research companies of the time, as well as work on top secret government projects. But many of the people who supported his professional career didn't have any clue at that time about the other major passion in his life, magic. From his time as a teenager, Parsons had maintained an interest in the occult, specifically the group Ordo Templis Orientis, run by Aleister Crowley, and everything else that was included in his magical practice of Thelema. Rituals to summon spirits, elementals, and other otherworldly beings became a regular thing for Parsons, as he attempted to gain more knowledge and power from the supernatural in order to further his work. He spent a couple of years with Crowley, which brought him further into occult teachings, which would eventually lead him to the point he wanted to perform his own massive ritual towards the end of his life. This ritual would go on to be called the Babylon Working, and would aim to end the current age of the world and begin the dawn of the new one by calling forth a divine archetypal named Babylon. During his time deepening his understandings and workings in magic, he was also continuing to advance his career in rocketry and in the year 1942, he founded a new company. Jack, along with a number of other big names in early rocketry at the time, founded a company that still remains one of the top institutions for rocketry in the world today, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory or JPL in Pasadena, California. Here, they set out with the goal to improve on the rocket engines they had already designed in an attempt to make them strong enough to take a rocket out through the layers of the atmosphere and into space. The new laboratory soon got noticed by NASA and the US government and began working with them to develop new technologies. JPL has always maintained a good working relationship with NASA, but their feelings on Parsons were not so comfortable. Many of the scientists and higher-ups working at NASA had their own thoughts on Jack Parsons, his interest in magic, and his willingness to merge it with his scientific endeavors. While Jack maintained that the magic he was practicing was real and would eventually be understood through the workings of quantum mechanics, most others at this time did not share this belief and looked at him with a cautious gaze. 
Parsons also continued to have a working relationship with many academics who were caught up in the anti-communist times of the Cold War, which also caused a bit of negative attention to be cast down on him from people within the government. Eventually, this led to NASA ending all forms of their relationship with Parsons, essentially blocking him from ever gaining a security clearance to work on government projects again. After his expulsion from the professional world of rocketry, Jack would go on to work at other explosive companies as well as building pyrotechnics for Hollywood movies. Sadly, this time would not last long and the world would lose the genius scientist that was Jack Parsons when he was just 37 years old. As he was getting ready to go on a vacation one day, he got a rush order for explosives to be used in a new movie. While he was mixing the compounds, something went wrong which set off a chain reaction with the copious piles of explosive materials he kept at his house. This ultimately resulted in a powerful explosion that left him with injuries that would quickly lead to his death en route to the hospital. The world was left wondering what else he could have achieved if fate had turned out different that day. But the legacy of Jack Parsons lives on in his development of the modern field of rocketry and his controversial partnership with many occult practitioners at that time. He has joined the group of physicists who dedicated their lives not only to science, but also to practices that try to shape the natural world through different means. He was not alone, and did you know that there have been quite a few famous scientists who also dabbled in more magical practices? You may be surprised to learn about some of them. The father of physicists and calculus Isaac Newton was an avid alchemist. He tried for many years to produce the fabled Philosopher's Stone, which he thought would help him to find the way of turning base metals into precious gold. A German physicist by the name of Johann Zollner, whose work is often credited as given many of the key ideas to higher dimensional physics. He believed in spiritualism and performed many experiments trying to prove the supernatural abilities of magicians and psychics of the time. Another famous scientist you may have heard of, J. Robert Oppenheimer, one of Parsons' contemporaries, was also a practicing occultist. Even going as far to perform a magical ritual with some of the atomic bomb tests during his time with Project Manhattan. These scientists and many more were able to be held in high regard in the scientific community, while also engaging in practices that were not supported by many scientists of the time. Looking through the scientists of the past, you don't have to go far to find one who believed in practices that we now consider to be fantasy. Could they have been right? Is there more to our universe than modern science has been able to uncover thus far? Could it be possible that they were tapping into a different realm of the universe that allowed them to see our reality as it really is? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think of the meshing of science and magic. See you next time on Matter.